Good morning and welcome on this rather rainy morning to our Wolverine Caucus Forum, the second in our forum series this year, and we're so excited to see all of you today. I want to encourage you to come to all of our forum series this year. Today is especially special because we get a chance to have two of our favorite legislators with us today, and I'm going to call Senator Liz Brader to the podium and our Senator from Ann Arbor. Well, good morning and welcome to Lansing, and I'm glad you all found it. I was a little, I went over the Farnham building, so I don't know if any other people might have gone there first, but it's nice to have you here, and um, I uh, wanted to give a brief welcome to um, Ed Kraus, Ray Pittman, and Daryl Weiner, um, Daryl Weiner from, from, who are going to give us a fascinating presentation today, and uh, my main role today is to introduce the in person who's going to introduce these presenters, and um, but it's always a pleasure to have the Wolverine Caucus up here, and you do such a good job. Thank you, Veronica, for facilitating this and bringing the uh, expertise of University of Michigan and Southeastern Michigan and all the uh, good things that are happening there um, up to Lansing. It's very beneficial as we fight to reinvent our economy in the 21st century. So um, it's my pleasure today to rep to introduce Representative Doug. Liz Geis is newly elected to the House of Representatives. He's from Taylor and he is a U of M alum. He has a former affiliation with a Ford Motor Company as an engineer and supervisor and uh, formerly was uh, the chair of the Taylor City Council, I believe. So I'm really um, glad he's joined us up in Lansing. We really um, need his expertise up here as well. So uh, without further ado, Representative Geis. This is a very, very timely subject. Uh, just recently in the Energy and Technology um, Committee, which I, I am vice chair as well as in the uh, Education Committee, we talked about the need for the partnerships between the universities and the businesses the community. Uh, what we found, if you look in the history of, uh, of the state, we have a tremendous amount of um, intellectual property, patents that are done in the university setting, uh, but unfortunately venture capital is, is not as readily available here and those patents are, are being uh, utilized and, and um, commercialized outside of the, the state of Michigan. So the fact that we have businesses and the university working together and putting a focus on that uh, is, is the right thing to do and, and where we need to uh, put our investment. Um, as a former uh, Ford Motor Company employee, and I um, received my MBA in, in 2000, engineering degree in 92, and my MBA uh, both from Ann Arbor in 2000, one of my senior uh, projects was to work with a company in Ann Arbor called Cybernet. And they had the definitive patents on force feedback technology. And it goes back to the 80s when they had a partnership with uh, the Department of Defense. So when the gaming industry came out and everybody's aware of force feedback technology, uh, steering wheels and everything else, this company said, well, Microsoft and Sony and all these people are infringing on our patents. Uh, so what did the engineers in, uh, in Cybernet and Ann Arbor decide to do? Well, they went out and designed their own joystick. Unfortunately, it cost about $200, twice as much as what Microsoft was doing. Uh, they didn't know how to commercialize it. They didn't know what to do. So uh, the MBA team that I was on said, you need to look at what your core competencies are. You need to look at what you're going to do from a strategic perspective. And we um, said, you're not going to be able to take on these big companies by yourself. Uh, you either need to sell the patents to these big companies or partner up with somebody else. And they actually did a company called uh, Immersion. Um, so when you go through uh, Best Buy aisle now, you see kind of the force feedback uh, joysticks and everything else. It's got immersion. That was a joint partnership between the company in Ann Arbor uh, and, uh, and, and, and immersion. They then went and sued Microsoft and Sony and ended up winning. Uh, if anybody that's familiar with the PlayStation 3, when the PlayStation 3 came out, it didn't have rumble technology in the joystick. And that was because Sony would not settle 
the, the lawsuit. So having that partnership, having, you know, whether or not it's on the engineering side of, the, of, of U of M campus or on the business school side of campus, it's a better use of our resources, a better use of our students and their abilities to work on real, real world situations. There's no you know, need to kind of go through the same old business cases you know, from Harvard Business School that were written you know, 10 years ago. Going out and putting, it to you know, putting uh, the knowledge into actual use is a better use of our, our intellectual property and the time and, and investment of the students as well as the companies. So knowing that uh, the folks in this room uh, have had you know, much more uh, recent application and working together and uh, definitely uh, you know this is a win-win situation for me Ford Motor Company uh, uh, personnel as well as uh, alumni of Ford and alumni and uh, representatives from the University of Michigan uh, that's basically the last 20 years of my life in terms of the realm that I've uh, walked within so this is absolutely a no-brainer for me to be here and uh, I would like to introduce we've got uh, Ed Krause who is uh, from, from Ford Motor Company and is currently the uh, External Alliances Manager for Research and Advanced Engineering. We also have Ray Pittman, my former boss, and I was many, many rungs uh, below Ray uh, at the time when he was my boss, uh, retired from Ford Motor Company and is CEO of uh, Coherix, and, which is a global leader in 3D uh, machine uh, vision, which in, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Perceptron, uh, my brother's the vice president and uh, general counsel over there, so probably one of your competitors when I looked over uh, what uh, Coherix does. Um, and then we've also got uh, Daryl Weiner, the executive director of uh, U of M Business Engagement Center. And uh, again, showing the partnership, showing the ability of business uh, and the university to work together. So I'd like to introduce uh, the three of you. I'm not sure who has the... Uh, Ed, Ed, he... he for, uh, last one to show up and the person that got the first one to go up. All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's always great to meet with fellow U of M alums, even if it is in East Lansing. I can handle that. Um, if I were going to title my remarks today, I would say it's really about the evolution of corporate relations, but it's going to be more of a tale of two universities, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the University of Michigan. I think a lot of the lessons here are really generally illustrative of what went on in corporate relations over the last decade or so, uh, but I think these individual examples will probably make it a bit more real. So in the late 1990s, there was a big upswing in industry, in university interest, in industry money. Uh, with the successful conclusion of the Cold War and some other political factors, the government money coming into universities was going down uh, quite substantially. And the universities were quite interested in finding a way to supplement that. I think in some cases there was a pent-up desire to work with industry, and in other cases there was a pent-up desire to replace that funding. And I think it's quite clear that how that's worked out in the past. The universities that were really committed to working with industry and not just, well, where do I find extra money, are the ones that have tended to do better. The alliance model, I'll call it, really came into fashion uh, in the early, mid-1990s, especially with MIT, Stanford, some of the really highly prestigious schools. Now, when I say alliance model, I'm referring to a multi-year, multi-million dollar uh, ongoing commitment between the company and the university that tended to have quite broad goals. Uh, Ford was swept up in this. Um, in our experience, we were earning record profits in the late 1990s, oh, for those days. Um, and our CEO, Alex Trotman, was serving on the board at IBM along with Chuck Vest, the president of MIT, former dean and, uh, and other positions at Michigan. And they decided they wanted to come up with a new model for company-university interactions to really change the way it was done, or at least change the way it was done at Ford. So a rather ambitious undertaking. And Ford initiated an alliance with MIT, $20 million uh, over five years. It was institute-wide, had a very broad portfolio of encompassing business, technology, policy, uh, you name it. And we also had substantial executive involvement. 